Well, this Thursday, of course, is Thanksgiving. Some of you are like, what? It is? This Thursday's Thanksgiving, and we as Americans have a tradition. Some are sinners and they eat ham, but for the Christians that are truly saved, they eat Thanksgiving turkey. And do you know that 280 million turkeys will be consumed this Thanksgiving by Americans across the country? And it's interesting, a lot of people are like, man, that's a lot of tryptophan. How many of you ever heard of tryptophan before? You know, tryptophan is that chemical that's contained by turkey that is supposedly cause us to be in lethargy and sleepy. Well, do you know there was a study done recently on how much turkey you would actually have to consume for the tryptophan to actually affect you? Each person would have to consume over 20 whole turkeys for the tryptophan within turkey to actually cause a difference in you. We're like, Brennan, then why am I so sleepy after Thanksgiving? Well, the study that was done proved that you actually are sleepy and tired after your Thanksgiving meal because you just ate too much. Because of the overindulgence in food and oftentimes the high amounts of sugar in those cranberry jelly and all the stuff that we eat and those yams, those sugared yams with whipped cream and brown sugar and all the stuff that we consume, it causes several different chemical reactions within our body, including blood sugar to be affected and all these other things that cause this comatose-like condition after our Thanksgiving meal. It seems in our country that Thanksgiving is the one day where it's our patriotic duty to be a glutton. It's what it seems like in America, but a lot of people will be consuming turkey on Thanksgiving. But do you know turkey isn't the only thing being consumed? Actually, the night before Thanksgiving, it's the single largest day out of the year in bar sales. The alcohol on the night before Thanksgiving is bought in bars more than any other day in the year, more than New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, more than St. Patrick's Day, more than Super Bowl Sunday. The, the night before Thanksgiving, that bar sales skyrocket. And it's for that same reason that people in the bars, that are in the bars, it's the same reason why during the Thanksgiving season, Suicide is at its highest. Now, you would think that during Thanksgiving season, it would be when people would be more encouraged and more thankful for what's happening in their life, but actually, that people are getting more depressed. Why is that? It's because during the Thanksgiving season, people look at their own lives. What do I have to be thankful for? And when life isn't going good, when life is going terribly, and when life is difficult, and when you're struggling through life, and you begin to look at your own life and say, well, what do I have to be thankful for? This person's thankful for that. This person's thankful for that. But I don't have any of that. What do I have to be thankful for in my own life? And in that introspection, I often say introspection always leads to depression. The more that I look at my own life, the more depressed I get. The more discouraged I get when I look at what's going on in my own life. And because of that, the idea of being thankful, people struggle with. I don't have much to be thankful for in this season. I don't have much to be thankful about. Maybe the marriage has failed, or maybe you've gone through a divorce, or maybe the kids are ostracized from your family. Maybe you've gone through a strained relationship or maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've gone through some difficulties that are causing you to say, you know what, I don't have much to be thankful for. What is there to be thankful for? And God would say through the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything, give thanks. Thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do you know the number one question I get asked as a pastor? I'm trying to discover God's will for my life, pastor. What's God's will for my life? Well, here's an easy one for you. This is God's will for your life. That in everything, no matter what situation you're going through, no matter what you're facing, that in everything... You are to give thanks. Well, pastor, that doesn't make sense. You mean that I'm supposed to give thanks? 
that I've gone through a divorce, that I'm, I'm supposed to be thankful, you know, that I, I lost my job. I'm supposed to be thankful that this has fallen apart. I'm supposed to be thankful. No, I didn't say be thankful. Do you know that be thankful, that phrase is only mentioned twice in the Bible? But hundreds of times, hundreds upon hundreds of times, we are told to give thanks. Be thankful, yeah, maybe once or twice, but give thanks hundreds of times. And you might say that can't really mean in everything. How is that practical? How is that possible? How am I supposed to be thankful for that? Well, it's not that you might be thankful. It might not be that you feel thankful, but we are to give thanks. And it's for this reason, because gratitude does not start with an attitude. The attitude of feeling thankful, oh, I'm so thankful for all that I have in my life. Gratitude or giving thanks doesn't start with the attitude of feeling thankful. Gratitude actually starts not with an attitude, but with an action. The attitude of gratitude starts with the action And the action is simply giving thanks to God. You see, when you take the action of verbalizing, giving praise and thanksgiving to God, it changes our attitude. The attitude that might cause us to be discouraged, the attitude that we might feel that we're just in the depths of despair, the attitude of depression, or the attitude of just being in a funk, in a, in a lull, and, and, and just being down. When in that place you simply give God thanks, it causes us to be lifted out of the pit of despair, out of the hole of discouragement, and into the clouds with the Lord. Simply by giving God praise. Why is coming to church and worshiping so important? Because we are actually ushered, the Bible says, into the throne room of God where we can experience God's presence in a greater way. And listen, everything in our lives, in light of God's presence, is nothing. The things that we get so caught up with, the things that we get so bummed about, the things that cause us to be so discouraged or depressed or even facing suicidal thoughts, the things that cause us to get so low simply are so insignificant in light of who God is in the presence of God. Worship brings us to that place of understanding who God is, how good he is how great he is, how powerful he is. And in light of who God is, listen, this doesn't really matter because of how good God is. Gratitude doesn't start with an attitude, but the attitude of gratitude starts with the action of giving God praise. We do that by worshiping him. And when you take that action of giving thanks, your actions become your attitude. Thanksgiving, the word thanksgiving or giving thanks is not to be an emotion we feel or a thought we think, but an action we take. First Chronicles 16, 34 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. It says to give thanks to the Lord, not just when you feel good, but because he is good. Thanksgiving or giving thanks, it's that action. It's something you are to do in every situation, in everything, give thanks. And when we do, our attitude is changed by our action. Don't believe me? What about Jonah? Jonah was in the depths of despair. Jonah was in the pits, quite literally. He was in the belly of a whale. Jonah was thrown overboard, swallowed by a great fish that God created to carry Jonah as a God-made submarine to where he needed to be. And Jonah, for three days and three nights, being digested by this fish, was being held, no doubt, in a dark, damp place. 
in discouragement and in the hardness of his heart. But after three days and three nights, he finally comes to a place in Jonah chapter two, verse nine, that he says, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I can tell you, Jonah didn't feel thankful being in the belly of a fish, being dissolved. But he said, even though I don't feel like giving thanks, I'm going to give thanks, even if it's a sacrifice for me to do so. Not only Jonah, but what about Paul and Silas? They're arrested because they were accused falsely, in prison wrongfully. They were beaten badly with rods. And now in the dungeons, in the damp, dark, depressing place, in Acts chapter 16, their feet in stalks, uncomfortable, rats crawling around. What do they do? They begin praising God. They begin giving God praise giving. They begin giving God thanks in thanksgiving. And as they begin to praise God, things change and the earthquake takes place and their chains break off and the doors swing open because God supernaturally lifted them out of the pit that they were in. Jonah, as he gives God praise and repents and he thanks God, God takes Jonah to where he needs to be and spits him out on that shore of Nineveh. When Paul and Silas give praise in their Damp, dark dungeon, the doors are open and they're ushered out of that place. And you see this happen over and over and over again in the scriptures. You see something changes within people's lives. Even when they're in difficult situations and they don't feel like praising. Even when they're in hard times and it wouldn't seem like they feel like worshiping. When they give that sacrifice of praise. Because of who God is and how great he is. God, I'm going to give you things. And when we simply do that, things change. If you take the action of giving thanks, you will start being more thankful. And that's why the attitude of gratitude always starts with that action. And that's why the words of the psalmist are true that I want to share with you today. In Psalms 92 verse 1, it says... It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises to your name. It is good. You might say, well, who's it good for, Pastor Brennan? Who's it good for? Is it that God says it's good to give praise because, well, it's good for God. You know, God doesn't need his ego stroked. God's not wondering. No, God doesn't suffer from insecurity issues. God's not saying, you know, I need you to tell me how good I am. You know, let let me know. You know, if I do something for you, I need you to tell me how good of a job I did because that, that will help me know. You know, God doesn't need his creation to compliment him. God's not telling you to give thanks to God because it's good for God to hear it. No, God is saying it is good to give thanks to the Lord. Well, who's it good for? Number one. It's good for you. Write that down. It's good for you to give thanks to the Lord. Giving thanks to God causes there to be an imparting of peace and contentment and joy and health in our lives. And that's not my opinion. Actually, medical science has been confirming this through study after study. Recent research has shown that people who are grateful and thankful are healthier in every way, emotionally, physically, and mentally. By taking the action of giving thanks, it cultivates the attitude of gratitude. And secular research scientists have found several findings. I want to share them with you. First, gratitude makes you happier. This article goes on, and I quote to say, When you give thanks every day for five minutes, they found in all cases after six months, each person is 10% happier than they previously were. Interesting. Gratitude makes you happier that when you, for five minutes a day, simply just give thanks, recognize your blessings. After making that a habit of your life for six months, 10% happier. But that's not all. Gratitude not only makes you happier, gratitude makes you healthier. 
People that gave thanks for five minutes a day after six months experienced, and I quote, 16% fewer physical ailments, 10% less physical pain, 8% more sleep, 25% higher sleep quality, and 19% more time exercising. Patients with hypertension that counted their blessings just once a week had a significant decrease in blood pressure. Gratitude causes you to be more relaxed and also have higher levels of energy. Gratitude reduces depressive symptoms by 35% as long as people gave thanks for five minutes a day. Gratitude, according now to medical scientific research, makes you healthier in every way. Gratitude not only makes you happier and healthier, but it actually makes you more popular. The article also went on in its findings. It found that gratitude makes people nicer, more trusting, more social, and more appreciative. And as a result, it helps people make more friends, deepen the existing relationships, and see improvements in marriage. Those that express gratitude are socially more friendly and have better relationships, receive more respect, and experience deeper friendships. Gratitude actually makes your relationships better. Not only does gratitude make that, but it also, gratitude makes your character. Your personality changes actually when you give thanks. It is found that gratitude or giving thanks causes people to be more optimistic, less materialistic, left self-centered, and have more self-esteem. It also is emotionally balancing, causing people to be more resilient, having good feelings, happier memories, less envy, and to be more relaxed. So gratitude actually makes your character. Gratitude also makes you more successful. It found that those that give thanks and take the action of gratitude are more successful in their careers. Because those that give thanks have the traits of having greater management skills, increased networking, that's due to the relationships, more likely to achieve goals and experience improved decision making and increased productivity. Giving thanks affects every aspect of your life. It causes the imparting of peace and contentment, joy and health. And now it's not just pastors preaching this. But it's actually secular medical scientists finding this to be true. And I love this. This is so great. You're going to love this. The article concludes by saying, This scientific article found that gratitude has, for most of us in its history, remained a discussion topic for pastors alone. But as a growing field of science is starting to show, the benefits of cultivating an attitude of gratitude are just very real. Science is now just starting to realize that God had it right all along. And all of these findings are backed up by secular scientific research and medical journals. And that is simply what God's word has been saying for thousands of years. It is good for you to give thanks to the Lord. It is good. But it's not only good for you. Number two, write this down. It's good to do. To give thanks to God for God. It's not what we have to be thankful for. It's who you have to be thankful for. If you are a Christian today, you always have something to give God thanks for, no matter how bad times are. You have God to thank for grabbing a hold of your life, for saving you, for choosing you, for giving you a future and a hope, for having thoughts towards you, good thoughts that outnumber the sands of the sea. The creator of the universe, God Almighty, caring about every little detail of your life because he cares for you. We have so much to be thankful for. But oftentimes we don't realize how much we have to be thankful for until we start giving thanks 
to God for who he is. And when we realize who he is and what he has done in giving things, it causes us to be more thankful. Why? Because we are saved. And that God who loves us gives us every good and perfect gift, including the most perfect gift, his perfect son, Jesus Christ. And if you aren't a Christian today, you've probably been wanting to have the attitude of gratitude. But maybe today you've been wondering how. How do I cultivate that attitude of gratitude? Well, listen, it starts with the action of giving thanks to God, primarily for the gift of Jesus Christ, his son, who came to the world, who died a horrible death, taking the punishment that was due to you and to me on himself when he died on the cross. And then three days rising again, claiming victory over sin and death and pronouncing forgiveness to the world And that anyone who accepts Jesus Christ, God's son, would not perish, but have everlasting life with God. We have eternity to look forward to if you're a Christian. But if you're not, then eternity is the worst place that you could be apart from Christ. Because apart from Christ, there is no love and joy and happiness, but eternal suffering in hell. If you haven't yet given your life to Jesus Christ, make today the day that you accept the greatest gift ever given, Jesus Christ. And just looking to Jesus, you have so much to be thankful for, that he's willing to save you and to give you a new beginning and a fresh start. So today, I want to give you that opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. Because today, we realize we can't have Thanksgiving this Thursday without giving thanks. And who do we have to give thanks to? It's the Lord. You cannot have a thank-filled Thanksgiving without a day filled with thanksgiving. And when we praise God, that's why today we set this day aside to continue to praise God. And we're going to sing a few more songs before we go our way today. And as we praise God, we have an opportunity to be lifted out of the discouragement, the frustration, or even like many people during this Thanksgiving week find themselves depressed in the bars, trying to numb their pain with alcohol, finding themselves in depression and suicidal. Why? Because they don't realize one thing, and that is this. Psalms 100, verse 4, we are told to enter his gates with thanksgiving, to go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him, and praise his name. How do we have thanksgiving? Well, it says right here, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And if you're not going into God's courts with praise, then you can't have a true thanksgiving. But when we do, when we worship him, listen, something supernatural takes place. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 41, this is a powerful verse. Write it down, memorize it, hold on to this. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 41. It says, let us lift our hearts. And many translations put, and hands, to the God in the heavens. But if you look it up, the translators mess this one up. Because word for word in the Greek, it actually says, let us lift our hearts with our hands to the God, to God in the heavens. That when we lift our hands in praise, we actually have the opportunity to lift our hearts out of the discouragement, out of the frustration, out of the heart-wrenching times that when we lift our hands up to the Lord, the God in the heavens, our hearts will follow and be lifted out of the discouragement and depression and will be lifted into a new place 
in our relationship with the Lord? How do I get out of this discouragement? How do I get out of this frustration? Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and praise his holy name. Church, it is good to give thanks to God. It is good for you. It is good to do. And so let's be people who praise God, not just on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, but every day. May it be the prayer of our hearts. God, I just have so much to thank you for. And let me start verbalizing and sharing those things that I'm thankful for. God, I'm going to give the sacrifice of Thanksgiving, even when I don't feel like it, even when it seems like everything's failing around me. God, I will do it. And when you do, let me tell you, you'll find there's so much to be thankful for when you give thanksgiving. May this thanksgiving be a day filled with thankful hearts because you realize who God is. And as we lift our hands in worship, may your hearts be lifted as you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. May we be people that give him praise as we praise his holy name.